Hey you, welcome to Hortense's Kitchen. This is a program where we teach young people how to cook delicious and nutritious meals like chicken and rice and fish and all kinds of meals. You know, something that you can put together when you want to invite your friends over and you'll be learning valuable skills that you can use later on for your own family. So today we are cooking a whole chicken. I find it tastes a lot better than the parts. So we're going to start from scratch. I have two onions, these are called onions. I don't have more pepper, I just have this half, but it will suffice for the time being. And I have some garlic. I am going to use a little bit of powder also, but these are natural seasoning that you could use. Let's say I was going to do this later on or tomorrow. I can leave this overnight to marinate. But today, we're going to use what I like to call a little bit of a Jamaican type of spice, a season up. It works for fish, it works for chicken, and most kind of meat that you be seasoning. Now the reason I call this program Miss Horton's Kitchen, I grew up in a family with a lot of boys. She would always say, you guys need to learn to do everything. Because these 21st century women that you're going to be running into, let's press a button, that's long before there was microwave. Back in those days, you had to have a fire going from scratch. Don't let the press button and warm up stuff. You want to warm up some tea, you got to get it on the fire. We had to learn to cook and clean and do everything like girls and every other domestic chore. So I want to share my knowledge with you guys. I find that a lot of young people don't know how to cook. Beautiful girls and I have no clue. You could impress a young man so much if you could invite him over to dinner as opposed to going to spend your money at Burger King or some other place. You will spend maybe $12 on chicken and some rice and that can give you a meal for two, three days as opposed to one meal for $12, $13 and then you're hungry again. So we're all about cleanliness. So you wash your hands first. Already did, but just to show you. This chicken I had thawing out in some warm water. It came out of the freezer. If you look under the top of this chicken, you notice some little bits of hair sticking out, hair follicles. You don't want that in your food, so you want to get rid of it. So you're just going to do it like that. You don't want to serve that to your guests, right? This is actually the end of the feather. I pour some vinegar in the water, and since I'm not going to take the skin off, I'm washing the skin with the vinegar. You're not going to put too much vinegar in the water. You don't know how much water in the size of the chicken, about three or four caps full. You want to make sure you get all the areas clean if you're going to put this in your belly. Then we're going to pour this all out. One of the easiest ways that you can get the skin off the garlic because you want to remove this part. So just put your knife on it like that. Give it a slap and look how easy it is to come off. Careful with your fingers now, keeping them back away from the knife. Eh? I'm trying to make these as even as possible so they'll pretty much melt out in the food. Then this is the way I'm going to get to the onions. I'm just going to cut right across here. You get the trash part of the onion off. You don't want this part in your meal. Yeah, the part of the so. Okay, buddy. And then you take your finger and when you're done with the onion, you chop off the little tip of your finger there. <laughs> and then you put it in on the meal. The pearls of right. having kids at the home and trying to run a program like this. Especially the coolish ones. And then you make sure you have salt because a lot of people know how to put salt with them fingertips. And, that's what? Right. and now we're going to slice right across. So you're kind of slanting it, eh? And I rest it on that side and I do this. I pity you can't smell the aroma coming from this season. The onion and the, the garlic smell so good. The little wash. What was too ready, but this is what's cut. Now we don't want to get the seeds in it, so we're going to cut it on the outside. The seeds are in the middle. Seeds will make it too hot. Some people can't take the spice. All right, so we we'll do it like this, especially if you're doing it for your whole family. Oh, by the way, she has her own channel on YouTube. You should check it out. It's called That Brady Chick. It actually teaches you how to take care of black hair. So you should check it out. There are different ways to do this. If you dice it, it actually melts away in the food. When you get home, you don't have a lot of stuff in the house. You can put together a very nice and nutritious meal from what you have. Next step is I'm going to show you how we cut up this chicken. You could cook it whole by just seasoning the whole thing and then put it in the oven. That's a different thing. So we're going to fry it and cook it down. So here we go. You want to aim for the joint, huh? Sometimes what I do is bend it just to see where it is. Then cut right through there. The leg and tie together there. We're going to put another cut through it here. We want to have many pieces as we can, so we're going to cut this again right in the joint of the leg. Like you see, you can bend it so you see where the joint is. Safer places on the board always. 
And now we're going to take the wing off and get a little bit of chest on it. And to get to the joint, this is the best way. You put the joint, the other leg, and tie. again separate them I like to, some people take the skin out but I like to fry it with the skin on it actually keeps some moisture in the chicken now this is the breast I like to do it like this now this is the back some people use this to make soup but for our purposes today we're going to cut it across and we're going to fry it down and cook it down just like the rest of the chicken now we don't want this big piece of fat, so we're going to remove that. And put that in the garbage over there. Do the same thing over this side. Then, now what we're going to be doing here, we're going to be seasoning this little fellow. The first thing I'm going to do is sprinkle a little bit of black pepper. But it works well for chicken. All purpose seasoning. Hot pepper, sauce. Now this is not too hot, it's really a sauce. Don't get too frightened by them putting on it. Sometimes that seasoning is not enough, so get a dash of salt on it. The seasoning that we just cut up. And then we're gonna mix it all in together. I finally put the spoon in like this. Turn it sideways when you're taking it out. So it doesn't spill all over the bowl. Then make sure every piece is covered with some of that seasoning. I like to taste a little bit of soy sauce with my chicken, so put a little bit. Don't put too much, because when you fry it, those of the sugar content in this, Sometimes it creates a black crust that you don't really want. Clean fingers. You want to just touch it. And touch it on your tongue. Tip up your tongue. You can actually taste a bit seasoned. Enough salt and pepper and so on. Alrighty. Already passed the taste test. So we're going to cover this little sucker now. And then leave that spin out here for a little while. It's a pity you can't smell it on the video. Because it's already nice and it's not yet cooked. And it's up and you can have a look been sitting there for 15 minutes so it's pretty much marinating enough to cook now for this evening's dinner right so in addition to this we're going to be a rice and chicken dinner so i'll teach you how to do the rice also this is a quick thing so by the time your guest comes over you'll be ready to serve and to impress this entire meal costs less than 25 dollars you can serve it for a few days it's in a family they like uh, 10 dollars and that chicken that size chicken whole chicken Actually, cost $11. You want to put enough rice for a pot that you have. You don't want to put too much for a small pot. You see all that water is getting white? I mean, some of it is actually the color of the rice, but you want to get rid of all the impurities. So wash this off. Carefully don't pour the rice out in the door. So now for this amount of rice, I use about, about a half of this pot of water. That amount of water. And we're going to put it at about 6 get it heated quickly. You want to put enough so that when you put the chicken in, it's covering at least a part of the chicken. That way you get the heat through the chicken better. As you can hear that bubbling sound, it means my pot was already hot, so the oil that I put in there is just getting hotter. Now when oil is really hot, it makes no sound at all. So you might just see looking there calm, pretty much just lies off, no popping. If you sprinkle a little salt in the oil, when you're frying, it doesn't splash up so much. And in the meantime, I'm going to be seasoning the water that the rice will be going in. So I'm going to put some salt, not too much, okay? Let me put about this amount of butter in. Remember, this is running at about number at six for the time being. This is pretty much good. Drop this in the water. This is a nice flavor. Right, let's turn this up to speed up things. Let the water get hot and start boiling up once it's been there. And we put the rice in. Some people actually put the rice in from now. You could do that. And once it starts bubbling up, you turn it down to minimum. You see how much I'm touching this food? You have to make sure your hands are always clean. Now, this thing is actually a splash guard. So when you're frying stuff, it doesn't splatter all over and burn you up. You want to kind of take the onions and so on off later when you're cooking it down. I don't want it to in the oil. There you go, don't drop it. As you can see, the rice is boiling up right now. And I'm at number nine. 
carry it in a line, it's going to burn. You want to bring it down to a minimum. Once you have it there, you can just lean it and it will you can steam down itself. It won't burn. So we don't want it to burn on one side. And turn it over. See that side is almost already done. But it's not ready to be eaten yet because it's not soaked, right? The seasoning on. Now, don't drop it. You want to keep them apart, okay? That way they fry dry. And when you put them too close together, they're pretty much just steam. I'm telling you. You would have to be blowing my own horn, maybe. I may say to myself, no, this is not it. It does. It does smell good. Yeah. <laughs> That's my girl. Yeah. So we want to turn this one over. That's nice and tender looking. But it's still not fully soaked. Now when we've done this, we're going to cook it down with the seasoning. But the right now, we just want to give it a nice crisp fry. Now we don't want your chicken to burn, so we turn it and check it. Okay? You cover it. You fry it fast. You keep the steaming. Of all of that seasoning, you see that onion and stuff and that juice. We're just going to be adding a little bit of uh, ketchup to this and then we're going to pour it all on top of the chicken and let it cook down for about 10 to 15 minutes. Nice and delicious. Just steaming by itself and clean it up. You can just cover that and leave it until it's dry enough. When the steam comes out and the rice is cooked. What I'm going to do here, a little bit of water, a little bit of pepper, maybe a little bit of a piece of coconut. We're going to get rid of this oil, pour it out, completely outside. You turn this off, you can see there's no oil in there, just a little coating in the pan. I'm just going to place these pieces in the pot. Now what we're going to do is pour this over here. Some chicken noodle. Well, not necessarily with noodle that much. So now we're going to pour this all out in there. Mix that seasoning that's in the pan. This is what's going to form your gravy. So now we're going to just pour it all over. Now this piece of coconut, you want it to stay in the water to dissolve, okay? And we're going to turn this up a bit. And it cooks. Put it to max so it will cook up fast. The rice is pretty much ready to go. Some people like it to be a little bit drier than this. I like it like this. But some people like it dry, so you just let it stay a little bit more time. With time, picking up top, you want to get this out. You don't want to serve this. You can see this bubbling up. I want it to be. I'm going to cover it so it steams. Get all those juices into the water from the meat. You're getting it nice and tender. Now that load and knowing sign of that is to get the even from the smoker. Now when it's mm. at this stage, it's okay to go ahead and put it at minimum. When you have it at minimum, you could leave your pot and go on the road and come back. It's not burned, okay? But if you have it at one, you're in danger. So this stays this way for about, say, 10, 15 minutes, you're ready. So let's say within half an hour, we've already cooked our chicken and our rice. Family's now 504. Family's coming home shortly. Then it's ready to go and they didn't spend a whole lot of money. If you were to buy these meals individually, say four people, you're looking at a little over 40 something dollars. This entire meal costs $21 actually, and it will last you for two, three, four days. Or more. Or even more. This is a more cost efficient method. Let's use these new skills that you've learned. Well, you just keep in touch with us, subscribe, and we're gonna be doing all kinds of meals, build up some of those skill sets, Save yourself some money and elevate your profile. Wrapping up from Hortense's Kitchen. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe and like us. All right? Peace. Big love. Dad? So how are you feeling, Dad? Oh, I'm better than yesterday, CR. What do you mean? You know I get better every day. <laughs> okay. Okay. Peace and love. Good. Peace and love. Next time. <laughs> yep, we're working on his outro, but until next time, peace and love.